Number 10. Flying Wing Design Imagine an aircraft so radical it looks like it's missing parts. No tail, no fuselage, just wing. This is the Flying Wing, aviation's boldest experiment that took 50 years to perfect. The story begins in the 1920s when Jack Northrup questioned aviation's fundamentals. Why do aircraft need anything but wings? While traditional aircraft wasted energy with drag-producing fuselages and tails, Northrup envisioned something pure. In parallel, Germany's Horton brothers unknowingly created the first stealth aircraft, the Ho-229, whose smooth curves naturally scattered radar signals. The flying wing's genius lies in its purity. Conventional aircraft lose 30% efficiency to fuselage and tail drag. The flying wing eliminates these entirely. Its thick center section ingeniously houses crew, payload, and fuel while providing structural strength. Every surface generates lift. But this elegance had a price. Without a vertical tail, the aircraft lacked natural stability, like an arrow without fletching. Early test pilots called it wrestling an angry bull. In 1948, a tragic YB-49 crash nearly ended the dream. Technology finally caught up in the 1970s. Digital fly-by-wire systems provided stability through thousands of corrections per second. The design proved perfect perfect for stealth. Without vertical surfaces, radar signals scattered harmlessly away. The B-2 Spirit emerged with the radar signature of a bird, despite its 172-foot wingspan, capable of striking anywhere on Earth from bases in Missouri. Today's designs split into two paths. Military applications advanced through the B-21 Raider and X-47B, while commercial projects like NASA's X-48 and Airbus's Maverick promised 30% better fuel efficiency. Northrop's vision wasn't just an aircraft design, it was aviation's future Future, waiting for technology to catch up. Number 9. Double Delta If the flying wing was ahead of its time, the Double Delta was from another planet entirely. In the 1950s, at the height of the Cold War, America needed something unprecedented. An aircraft that could outrun any missile, fly higher than any interceptor, and photograph vast territories within minutes. Lockheed's legendary designer Clarence Kelly Johnson accepted this seemingly impossible challenge. Johnson, already famous for the U-2 spy plane, knew conventional wings wouldn't work at three times the speed of of sound. His solution? Combine two delta wings into one revolutionary design. The double delta's genius lies in its dual personality. The inner wing, swept at a radical 68.5 degrees, handles the intense forces of Mach 3 flight. The outer wing, at a gentler 40 degrees, provides crucial lift during takeoff and landing. Like a mathematical equation solved in metal, each angle serves a specific purpose. But flying at Mach 3 created problems no aircraft had faced before. At these speeds, friction heated the airframe to over 600 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt aluminum. Conventional fuel would boil. Even the windows cooked the pilots. Johnson's team had to reinvent aviation. They developed special titanium alloys, created new fuels that wouldn't break down at high temperatures, and designed unique expansion joints that allowed the airframe to grow by several inches at high speeds. The result was the SR-71 Blackbird, an aircraft so advanced its routine cruising altitude was at the edge of space. When threatened by missiles, it simply accelerated. No SR-71 was ever shot down. It could survey 100,000 square miles per hour, photographing entire countries in a single mission. The Double Delta's influence extended far beyond reconnaissance, with its principles guiding designs from NASA's space shuttle and military aircraft, like the Saab Gripen and China's J-20, to hypersonic research vehicles like the X-51 Wave Rider, exceeding Mach 5, all leveraging its unique capability to efficiently handle multiple speed regimes while maintaining stability and control. Number 8. Forward Swept Wings While the Double Delta conquered multiple speed regimes, another design asked, what if wings worked better pointed forward. The concept wasn't entirely new. Germany's Junkers Ju-287 tested it in 1944, but failed due to material limitations. In the early 1980s, as fighter designs reached their limits, DARPA and Grumman revived this revolutionary idea. However, forward-swept wings faced a critical problem called aeroelastic divergence. At high speeds, the wings would literally twist themselves apart. The faster the aircraft flew, the worse the twisting became. A deadly spiral that conventional aluminum couldn't survive. Dr. Paul Bevilacqua and Grumman's team found the solution in carbon fiber composites. By laying fibers in precise patterns, they created wings that actually resisted twisting as they bent. This wasn't just a new design, it was a materials revolution. The benefits were revolutionary. Forward swept wings maintained smooth airflow at extreme angles of attack, up to 45 degrees. They reduced drag by 20% while providing better control at low speeds. The design moved the center of lift forward, enabling 
enabling tighter turns and better maneuverability. The X-29 was one of history's most ambitious aircraft, so unstable it would fall out of control in less than a quarter second without computers. To keep it flying, the X-29 used three separate computer systems, making 40 adjustments every second faster than any human pilot could react. This inherent instability became its greatest advantage, making it incredibly responsive. One test pilot described it as thinking about turning and the aircraft was already there. Russia took the concept further with the Su-47 Burkut, adding thrust vectoring and expanding the flight envelope. While never entering production, it proved forward-swept wings could work at larger scales. Though no forward-swept wing fighter entered service, the program revolutionized aviation. Its composite materials technology now appears in every modern aircraft from the 7A7 Dreamliner to the F-35. Its flight control systems paved the way for today's unstable but highly maneuverable fighters. Number 7. Canard Delta While forward-swept wings mastered instability for control, another design would revolutionize air combat by mastering the art of vortex lift. The concept's roots trace back to the Wright brothers' first aircraft, which used canards for pitch control. But it took the genius of Swedish engineer Eric Bratt in the 19th 1960s to combine it with a delta wing. His creation, the Saab Vigen, revolutionized fighter design. The genius lies in aerodynamic synergy. Forward canards create powerful vortices, energizing airflow over the main delta wing. This enables controlled flight at up to 70 degree angle of attack, triple that of conventional fighters. These jets can even perform the spectacular Cobra maneuver, pointing their nose up to 110 degrees while maintaining forward flight. The canards act like an automatic safety net, preventing stalls before they happen. In modern dogfights, this translates to superior point-and-shoot capability. Canard deltas can aim their weapons faster while maintaining energy, giving them a decisive edge in close combat. However, this performance demands precise engineering. The canard's position must be exact. Too far forward reduces stability, too far back diminishes control. Modern computer control systems manage this delicate balance 40 times per second. Today's canard deltas dominate European fighter design, with the Typhoon, Rafale and Gripen forming the backbone of multiple air forces. China's J-20 stealth fighter also adopts this configuration, proving its relevance in the stealth era. Number 6. Inverted Gull Wings While canard deltas mastered high-angle maneuverability, another design solved a different challenge entirely, the need to land powerful fighters on aircraft carriers. In 1940, the U.S. Navy faced an impossible challenge, how to fit a massive 13-foot propeller on a carrier fighter while keeping landing gear short and strong. Traditional designs couldn't solve this contradiction. Chance Vought's chief engineer Rex Beisel found inspiration in seagull wings. The distinctive bent wing design reduced landing gear weight by 40% while maintaining propeller clearance. This natural solution would revolutionize carrier aviation. The wings bend delivered unexpected advantages. 15% less interference drag dramatically improved pilot visibility and superior structural strength allowing speeds over 500 miles per hour. The design's wing root intakes also provided efficient engine cooling, earning it the Japanese nickname Whistling Death. The F-4U Corsair dominated the Pacific War with an 11-1 kill ratio, 2,140 enemy aircraft for just 189 losses. From Guadalcanal to Okinawa, it outfought and outran nearly every opponent it faced. Despite initial carrier landing challenges due to visibility issues, refinements made it one of history's most successful carrier fighters. The German Ju-87 Stuka and American P-35 also adopted this wing design for their specific mission. While rare today, the inverted gull wing proved that innovative solutions to practical problems often yield unexpected benefits. Number 5. Rectangular Wing Let's return to where flight began, with the simplest yet most revolutionary wing design in history, the rectangular wing. December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers chose this simple straight-edge design for their first aircraft, not for lack of imagination, but because they understood something fundamental. In aviation, simplicity often guarantees reliability. The genius Genius lies in predictability. Rectangular wings stall from root to tip, giving pilots crucial warning time. Their constant cord length provides consistent airflow across the entire span. While less efficient than modern designs, they're more forgiving, exactly what new pilots need. This design shaped aviation history twice, first by enabling controlled powered flight itself, then by becoming the standard for flight training. The legendary Piper Cub and Cessna 11552 used rectangular wings to teach generations of pilots, including many who would later fly supersonic jets. During World War I, most military aircraft used rectangular wings for their
their simple construction and reliability. Today, military trainers like the T-6 Texan II continue to rely on their predictable characteristics. While swept and delta wings now rule high-speed flight, rectangular wings still dominate general aviation. The Cessna 172 Skyhawk, the most produced civilian aircraft in history, proves that sometimes the original solution remains the best. Number 4. Elliptical Wings Number 4 is perhaps the most beautiful wing ever designed. The elliptical wing. In 1934, Supermarine's chief designer Reginald Mitchell faced an impossible challenge. The Air Ministry demanded a fighter that could reach 350 miles per hour while carrying eight heavy machine guns in its wings. Conventional designs couldn't house the weapons without creating excessive drag. Mitchell's solution? The mathematically perfect elliptical wing. The elliptical plan form achieves what engineers call perfect spanwise lift distribution. Each point along the wingspan carries exactly its optimum share of the load, minimizing induced drag by up to 15% compared to straight wings. The design also allowed for an incredibly thin wing section, just 13% at its root, tapering to 6% at the tips, crucial for high-speed performance. But per perfection had its price. Each wing required over 15,000 rivets and complex compound curves. Manufacturing time was nearly double that of conventional wings. Castle Bromwich, the main Spitfire factory, spent months perfecting the process. Germany's Heinkel company tried copying the design, but abandoned it as too complex for mass production. The result vindicated Mitchell's vision. The Spitfire could outturn any opponent, climb at 2,600 feet per minute, and exceed 360 miles per hour, capabilities that proved decisive during the Battle of Britain. The RF Spitfires accounted for 529 enemy aircraft in just three months of 1940. While pure elliptical wings largely disappeared due to manufacturing complexity, their influence persists. Modern winglets and adaptive wing tips seek to achieve similar efficiency through different means. Aircraft like the P-51 Mustang and Hawker Tempest adopted semi-elliptical designs, finding a balance between performance and practicality. Number 3. Delta Wings At number 3, we have the wing that defined the supersonic age, the Delta Wing. In 1931, German engineer Alexander Lippisch unveiled his Delta One pioneering aviation's most radical wing design. Inspired by the high-speed dive of Peregrine Falcons, his triangular design faced ridicule from aviation experts. This vision culminated in the Mi-163 Comet, the world's first operational rocket-powered Delta Wing aircraft. As pilots pushed toward Mach 1 in the late 1940s, his innovation would prove prophetic. The Delta Wing's genius lies in its physics. The sharp leading edge creates powerful vortices, spinning tubes of air that generate lift at high angles of attack. At supersonic speeds, its swept leading edge stays behind the shockwave, dramatically reducing drag. One design solving two critical challenges. The Mirage 3 proved the concept's lethal effectiveness. During the Six-Day War, Israeli Mirage's spearheaded Operation Focus, helping destroy hundreds of Arab aircraft in just three hours. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union's Delta Wing MiG-21 would become history's most produced supersonic fighter with 11,496 units, seeing combat from Vietnam to Desert Storm. But this speed came with trade-offs. Delta wings demand high landing speeds and long runways. Their poor low-speed performance led to developments like the Canard Delta in modern fighters, like the Eurofighter Typhoon. Today's Delta wings power everything from supersonic fighters to the space shuttle. The design's simplicity and strength make it ideal for hypersonic flight, where traditional wings would fail. Concorde proved its commercial potential, reliably flying at Mach 2 for over three decades. Number 2. Variable Sweep Wings Our runner-up is perhaps aviation's most dramatic innovation, the Variable Sweep Wing. In 1942, German engineers at Messerschmitt developed the Piet 1101, the world's first variable sweep wing aircraft. Though it never flew, captured designs inspired American engineers at Bell Aircraft. Their X-5 became the first aircraft to demonstrate variable sweep in flight in 1951. But achieving this seemingly simple idea proved devilishly complex. Variable sweep wings solve aviation's oldest dilemma, the conflict between high-speed and low-speed flight. At low speeds, the wings extend outward, maximizing lift. For supersonic dash, they sweep back, slicing through the air with minimal drag. But the engineering challenge? A massive pivot point 
that could withstand incredible forces while housing control systems and fuel lines. The F-111 Aardvark proved the concept's worth in Vietnam. Its swing wings allowed it to take off from short runways, cruise at Mach 2.2, then slow down for precise low-level bombing runs. In Desert Storm, F-111s took out 1,500 Iraqi tanks. The Soviet Tu-160 White Swan strategic bomber pushed the design further, with the largest variable sweep wings ever built. But complexity came at a cost. The heavy wing pivot mechanism reduced payload capacity. Maintenance nightmares and high operating costs eventually led to simpler fixed-wing designs. The last variable sweep fighter, the F-14 Tomcat, retired in 2006. While no new swing-wing aircraft are being built, but the concept revolutionized adaptive design, inspiring morphing wings that change shape mid-flight. Number 1. Swept Wings And now for our number 1, the innovation that revolutionized air combat, the swept wing. In 1935, German aerodynamicist Adolf Bussmann unveiled his swept wing theory at the Volta Conference in Rome. By 1944, this theory became reality in the Mi-262, hitting 515 miles per hour while Allied fighters struggled to reach 450 miles per hour. Its 18.5 degree sweep seemed modest, but it changed aviation forever. Swept wings defeat the sound barrier through clever geometry. A 35-degree sweep reduces effective airspeed by reducing the wing's perpendicular area to the airflow. The Mi-262's modest sweep was just the beginning. Post-war designs would push to 45 degrees and beyond. 1950, MiG Alley becomes swept wings crucible. Soviet MiG-15s, with their 35-degree sweep, could climb at 12,000 feet per minute and hit Mach 0.92. Only the F-86 Sabre's 35-degree swept wing could match it, leading to history first jet vs jet dogfights. Final score? Over 600 confirmed MiG kills by Sabres. Unlike the complex variable sweep F-14 or the Delta Wing MiG-21, swept wings offered the perfect balance of speed and agility. The F-100 Super Sabre proved this in 1953, becoming the first fighter to sustain supersonic speed in level flight. Its 45-degree sweep became the template for modern fighters. Today, every frontline fighter uses swept wings. The F-15 Eagle's 45-degree sweep helped it achieve 104 air combat victories without a single loss. Even stealth aircraft like the F-22 Raptor maintain this winning formula, combining swept wings with advanced materials. Sometimes, the most decisive advantage comes not from complex technology, but from understanding the simple physics of air itself.